Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Marta Lakova, and I'm here today to talk about Stellar Core, the backbone of the Stellar Network. So we wanted to take this opportunity and walk you through the high level design of Stellar Core. I uh, also wanted to acknowledge uh, a colleague of mine, Graydon, who put together the original deck Stellar Core data flows, uh, which was a major inspiration for this presentation. So a lot of diagrams that you'll see here today were actually originally created by Graydon. So a quick intro, um, I'm a software engineer on the Stellar Core team. Uh, I've been around for about three and a half years and my work mostly focuses on security and scalability of the Stellar network. So let's briefly go over the agenda. Uh, first, we'll go over Stellar Core and the Stellar network overview at a very, very high level. We will then di dive deeper into some implementation details of Stellar Core. And finally, we'll finish off with a few examples of how data flows across the Stellar network. So let's start with an overview. So traditional financial systems are fragmented and expensive. For example, sending money internationally typically requires high fees and you need to wait hours to days in order to settle the funds. What if we had a network where anybody could join and transact? So those transactions would be from anyone to anyone in the world, that would be fast, meaning that settling happens in order of seconds. And those transactions would be very cheap with a fees of fraction of a cent. So the good news is that Stellar Core enables such a network. So just to reiterate here, the goal of the Stellar network is to provide financial infrastructure for fast and cheap payments, uh, which is resilient to failures and available to anyone anywhere. So first let's discuss uh, what the Stellar network is. The Stellar Network is a group of Stellar Cores, which are responsible for deciding which transactions to confirm. Each Stellar Core has a copy of the current state and is responsible for correctly maintaining it. So one great property of the Stellar Network is that it's open membership, meaning that anybody can join without the third party approval. Now let's discuss how users interact with the Stellar Network. A user typically talks to a web service called Horizon, and Horizon's uh, job is to process transactions from users and submit them to the Stellar network. Horizon also indexes and serves historical data that is produced by the Stellar network. Note here that Core does not actually have all of the historical data. Its main job, as we discussed, is to agree on transactions and maintain current state. It is Horizon's job, though, to give users ability to search historical data. And visually, it looks like this. So as you can see on the right, there is a network of Stellar cores that comprises the Stellar network. In the middle, we have Horizon, which talks to Stellar core. Uh, and on the left, a user interacts with Horizon, which allows the user to send transactions to the network, but also query Horizon for transaction history. So let's dive deeper into the internals of Stellar core. Remember we said that Stellar Core is in charge of maintaining state? We call this state ledger. Each Stellar Core receives an input in the form of transactions submitted to the network. Uh, for the sake of this example, I used 100 transactions submitted to the network. Um, when Stellar Core agrees with other Stellar Cores on transactions to confirm in a particular ledger, it transitions to the next state, meaning new snapshot of the ledger. And it makes that transition by applying a set of transactions that were selected on the network. It also produces the output in the form of transaction results. We will discuss the ledger transactions and results in much greater detail in later slides. But all I want you to take away from this slide is the fact that Stellar Core continuously makes this state transition by closing new ledgers over and over again. So we talked about the fact that Stellar Network consists of many replicas of Stellar Core. We also talked about the fact that each core needs to agree on which transactions to apply in order to advance to the next state. It is important to note that a consensus protocol basically ensures that replicas on a network produce the same result. Uh, producing the same result essentially means applying the same transactions to a particular ledger. On Stellar, the Stellar consensus protocol ensures that all Stellar cores apply uh, the same transactions. Uh, let's spend a little bit more time on the fact that the Stellar network consists of many Stellar cores. So why is this replication actually important? 
First of all, I wanted to note that Stellar cores are running on physically different computers by different people in different geolocations. It is important to have many replicas because if any entity goes down, the rest of the network can continue to make progress. So uh, despite hardware failures on certain nodes, the network can continue to be available and confirm transactions. Replication is also crucial if any of the network participants turn malicious. So in this context, uh, malicious means that the node may start sending invalid votes or sending different votes to different nodes. The rest of the network can actually detect these dishonest nodes and continue to confirm transactions correctly, which is a great property. Um, it is worth noting though that uh, there is a limit on uh, how many failed or dishonest nodes um, a particular network can tolerate. So specifically, the Stellar Consensus Protocol guarantees that the network of three F plus one nodes can tolerate up to F failures. And by failures here, I mean either nodes are turning malicious or going offline or having some sort of hardware failure for, for whatever reason. So how often is new ledger produced? Uh, typically, Stellar Core closes, closes a ledger every five seconds. Um, and there are some important properties of the Stellar Consensus Protocol regarding uh, new closed ledgers uh, that happens every five seconds. So first, once a ledger is, is closed, it cannot be rolled back. So note that this is different from proof of work systems where an arbitrary number of blocks is required for transaction finality. On Stellar, only one block is required to be sure that transactions applied were indeed confirmed by the network. But you might wonder why exactly is this better? Uh, there are two things here. First, uh, we are guaranteed that a transaction confirmed in a ledger cannot be revoked. This is a really important property of Stellar. The Stellar network does not produce a block unless everybody on the network agrees on the same block. Um, so again, to contrast it with the proof of work networks, a block is optimistically produced with the possibility to be rolled back and replaced by another block later. Uh, and then this observation brings us to another key design principle. So if Stellar Core cannot agree on transactions to apply, nodes actually halt and stop confirming transactions altogether. And this is, this is by design as Stellar, Core, Stellar Consensus Protocol favors safety over liveness. And what I mean by safety is the ability of Stellar Core to produce identical results to other Stellar Cores. By liveness, I mean that the result will eventually be produced. In proof of work systems, because nodes keep producing blocks with the possibility of an override, those systems prefer liveness meaning that they prefer to produce something uh, as opposed to preferring safety, meaning that making sure that everybody produces the same block. Great, so let's dive a little bit deeper into Stellar Core implementation. Um, so there are three important parts of the Stellar Core implementation. So at the top, we have the transaction protocol. This is the protocol that understands Stellar transactions and knows how to apply them to modify the current state. This protocol is what allows Stellar to support financial operations, such as payments and the order books. It also supports various digital assets on a network, such as stable coins like USDC. Next, there is the Stellar Consensus Protocol. This is the protocol that allows multiple Stellar cores come to a conclusion together on which transactions to apply. I want to emphasize here that Stellar Consensus Protocol does not need to know anything about transactions. It is a mechanism to agree on something in the distributed system. Uh, it could really be anything. Uh, it's just on Stellar. The agreement happens to be on sets of transactions. And then finally, we have the overlay protocol. So the overlay protocol is what allows Stellar Core to talk to each other in the first place. Uh, this protocol allows cores to discover other Stellar cores, connect to them, and send them valuable information such as transactions, Stellar Consensus Protocol votes, and so forth. Uh, the overlay protocol is also responsible for flooding of important SCP messages and transactions such that 
um, one entity on the network can censor transactions and eventually everyone in the network will learn uh, about a particular transaction or a consensus vote. Um, again, here, I want to emphasize that the overlay protocol does not need to know anything about transactions or SCP. It just knows how to talk to other stellar cores uh, via the internet and broadcast relevant information. Great, so now I want to spend some time on definitions that we started to talk about earlier. So recall that stellar core produces a new state or new ledger every five seconds. Uh, and what exactly do we mean by state? Um, so state means a complete description of all ledger entries. So these ledger entries include accounts, trust lines, offers, account data, claimable balances, and our most recent addition, liquidity pools. So recall that to transition into a new state or closed ledger, Stellar Core votes on transactions. Uh, so transactions consist of up to 100 operations. Uh, each operation is essentially a description of modifications to ledger entries. Um, the reason we allow multiple operations per transaction is that uh, transaction application is atomic. Uh, so this way we either execute all of the operations in, in a transaction or none of them. Um, and then this is very convenient. Uh, so this feature is actually very convenient for some of the uh, transaction protocol features. And then finally, uh, recall that after transaction application, Stellar Core produces a new ledger and emits results. Uh, so what are these results? Results uh, consist of a set of transactions applied, a description of whether each transaction failed or succeeded. It also contains a detailed log of changes to ledger entries for every operation. And um, this log of changes is actually very useful for consumers like Horizon. So remember that Horizon keeps track of all historical data so it is very useful for Horizon to receive a ledger entry diff in order to understand what happened in a particular ledger and update its tables accordingly. Okay, so now that we've defined ledgers, transactions, and results, let's discuss where all of these are stores. So for ledgers, the current state is stored in a local SQL database, which is modified when the new ledger is closed meaning that new transactions are applied. Stellar Core also stores its state in a data structure called buckets, which are essentially snapshots of the state. Um, it allows Core to efficiently hash the entire state and publish state diffs to a history archive. Um, and I know this is the first time we mentioned these history archive and we will discuss what they are in greater detail in the next slide. Um, but so what I want to re reiterate here is that both SQL database and buckets store equivalent information just via different data structures. Um, and then the buckets is a convenient way to upload the state uh, to, to the archive. So for transactions, uh, Stellar Core stores them in memory, uh, but also transactions are flooded on the network to other Stellar Cores. And then finally, uh, we have transaction results, which are stored in files and published to history archive. So the, the more fine grained information, such as diffs to ledger entries for each individual operation uh, are also sent to consumers like Horizon uh, via high bandwidth OS mechanisms, uh, specifically OS pipes. All right, so we've been mentioning these history archives, but what are they exactly? So history archives essentially are needed for the long-term storage of transaction history. Its primary goal is to allow other stellar cores on the network to catch up to the current state of the network. It's worth noting that archives allow cores to catch up to any state in the past. So recall that history archives store buckets, which are snapshots of state. Uh, they also store transaction history, which is a list of edits to that state. So Stellar Core can either reconstruct the needed state by applying buckets, or it can replay transaction history and 
land in the exact same state. The only difference is that by replaying transactions, Stellar Core will pr also produce results, uh, those logs of changes uh, that are useful for consumers like Horizon. Uh, and then another thing to note is that each Stellar Core may have its own archive. So the Stellar Network may have different archives. Um, Stellar Core, in fact, has many different archives with uh, copies of transaction and state data, uh, which is a great property because it's, it's really great for resilience. Great. So let's go over a few examples of how data flows on the Stellar Network. So here you can see a user sending a transaction to the network. Uh, like we discussed before, a user typically uses Horizon to submit transaction. Uh, tr so this transaction is then flooded to other Stellar cores along with SCP votes. And then when all Stellar cores agree on which transactions to apply, each Stellar core performs application by updating uh, ledger entries in its local database but also writing to an external archive that we just discussed. Once transaction application is done and the ledger is closed, Stellar Core also sends uh, fine grained results it produced to Horizon so, so that an end user can query any historical data produced by closing that particular ledger. Uh, so this process repeats over and over again. And essentially, this is how the Stellar Network operates. All right, let's go on over another flow uh, where a brand new node joins the network. So on the left side here, we have two cores connected to each other. Uh, they're flooding transactions and SCP votes. And let's say they just closed ledger N. On the right side, there is a brand new node that just joined the network and it's at ledger one. Thanks to the overlay protocol, this new Stellar core that just joined uh, discovers other two cores on the network and it connects to them. Um, once it's connected, it learns that the network is currently at ledger N. So remember that Stellar cores themselves aren't responsible for storing history. So the new Stellar core needs to query a historical archive in order to catch up to the most recent state. Um, it is worth noting that the Stellar Core uh, that just joined and is catching up, it continues to listen to other Stellar Cores and record any new ledgers that the network may have closed in the meantime, um, you know, such as N plus one and N plus two and so forth. So this new core uh, downloads the necessary data from the archive. Uh, then it can either replay transactions um, or it can recon reconstruct the state by applying buckets. Um, and then after it, it, it does that, it lands at ledger N. It then replaces any new ledger it heard about in the meantime, uh, which is N plus one, N plus two, and so forth. And then after that is done, that node is finally in sync and it can participate in consensus and confirm transactions. So um, I, I would like to also point out that Stellar Core specifies external archives it knows about um, and trust in its um, configuration file. So you can configure which archives you wanna catch up to uh, via the Stellar Core um, config. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, the general overview of how the new node joins the network. And so this concludes my presentation. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to post them below. Uh, we would appreciate any input. And thank you very much for listening.